Okay. Have you been told, did you ever hear of the curious, furious, fidgety year when Santa Claus unhitched his sleigh and vowed he was taking a holiday? How did it happen? This way. It was long ago before you were living, not yet, yet Christmas, but past Thanksgiving, though I can't remember the very date. Santa got up one morning, late, pulled on one boat, boot, then its twin, ruffled the whiskers on his chin, and sat back down on the side of the bed. Great North Star, but I'm tired, he said, painting wagons red and bright, sharpening ice skates half the night, wrapping presents in tissue and gauze, has worn me weary, said Santa Claus. Crick in my back, cold in my nose, aches in my fingers and all ten toes, and a sort of a kind of a kink inside whenever I think of that Christmas ride. Into his workroom went the saint. He sniffed the varnish, he smelled the paint, and a reeling feeling came over him stealing to see things crammed from floor to ceiling. Rocking horses with shaggy manes, dolls, electric trains, gloves, mitts, doctor's kits, rubber boots, cowboy suits, kites for flying in parks, bicycles, Noah's arks, and he started to shake and he started to shiver at the load, at the thought of the load he must soon deliver. And he sighed, oh dear, as he buttoned his vest, I wish one year I could take a rest. When the words were out, he stood stock still and then he whispered, I think I will, I will, he cried with his eyes ablaze. Everyone else gets holidays. Sailors and tailors and cooks do, policemen and writers of books do, tamers of lions or leopards, preachers and teachers and shepherds, watchmen, scotchmen, Spaniards, Turks, butchers and bakers and grocery clerks. They all take time off as Christmas nears, all except me. And it appears that saint or not, it's time I got my first vacation in a thousand years. Out in the stable, nuzzling hay, the reindeer dreamed of Christmas Day. But Santa phoned to the reindeer groom, hang up the harness in the big storeroom. He called to his elves, he told each gnome, cover up the shelves, we're staying home. What? Cover the shelves? cried gnomes and elves. Cover the dolls and electric trains and the rocking horses with shaggy manes and the rubber boots for splashing in parks and the cowboy suits and the Noah's arks. Alas, alack, for they couldn't believe he wouldn't go riding on Christmas Eve. Put him away, roared Santa, vexed. This year's presents will do for next. Warn the people, tell the papers. I'm much too tired for Christmas capers. A cold crick in my back, a cold that lingers, aches in my toes and all ten fingers. Bit of lumbago, touch of gout. Climbing down chimneys is simply out. I may be the saint of the children's nation, but this is the year of my first vacation. Well, you can imagine more or less what happened when that news reached the press. Headlines screamed, wires went humming, Santa says, too tired, not coming. And as the word flashed far and wide, you should have heard how the children cried. So violently they sobbed their griefs that shops ran out of handkerchiefs, that tears filled up the kitchen sinks and cellars and empty skating rinks. They wept in school and at play they wept. They, they dampened their pillars while they slept. Before these darling eyes got drier, all the rivers ro rose three feet higher. And I don't know what would have happened quite except for Ignatius Heppelwhite. Ignatius Heppelwhite was a boy in Texas, or was it Illinois? Six years old, but brave for his years, he sobbed no sobbed, and he, and he wept no tears, but stood up tall in his class to say, Santa deserves a holiday. No, 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 came the children's plaint. What is Christmas without our saint? Shucks now, fellas, good, good gracious. Christmas is Christmas, cried Ignatius. And everyone tells me whom I've met, it's a day to give, as well as to get. Since all these years in the children's cause, Santa's been giving without one pause. Let's pull together in the Christmas weather, and give this year to Santa Claus. Hooray, his classmates said. He's right. Three cheers for Ignatius Pepperwhite. Fast as a hurricane, children hurled that happy message around the world. Over each continent, isle, and isthmus, Let's give Santa a Merry Christmas. With snow, the earth was already whitening, but they rolled up their sleeves and worked like lightning. They opened their piggy banks, racked their brains, 
They chartered buses and special trains and ships and sledges and hydroplanes to reach the pole by the 24th with all their gold. East, south, west, and north came gifts and gifts and gifts to spare from clever children everywhere. Slippers with zippers to zip on, soap for his bath or to slip on, geraniums pink in a pot, one guppy, a puppy named Spot, bought some pillows, strawberry jam, dressing gowns with his monogram, ten harmonicas for him to play on, hand-painted hand pictures done in crayon, mufflers, pipes, an easy chair, and lots of winter underwear. In New York State, a boy called Pudge cooked him a plate of homemade fudge. A little, little girl guides of Britain each made him a scarlet mitten, while a boy in Siam sent him a Siamese kitten. They sent him lemon drops by the carton, ashtrays modeled in kindergarten, jackknives, pen wipers, cakes and crullers, and magic pencils that wrote in three colors. Tots who hadn't a penny wrote to spend, wrote a letter signed a friend. And they had more, and they had more fun that strange December, they said, than any they could remember. Up at the pole in the fragrant hay, the idle reindeer dreamed at play. Comet nicked, nickered for oats and corn. Dancer brandished his velvet horn, while sadly, sorrily lounged at home each idle elf and gnome. Santa sat poking the fire and blinking, but nobody knew what he was thinking. Then suddenly, from the sky, they came sound of planes, the hoot and the cry of ships and special trains. Noel tootled the sledges, honk, the buses said, and out of a study window Santa put his head. He looked to the left, he stared to the right, he didn't trust his own eyesight. So many, so merry, so more and more, packages were rolling to his front door. Smack at his door still they thundered, a million, a thousand, a hundred, flat ones and fat ones and lean ones, crimson and silver and green ones. Broad ones, odd ones, plain, romantic ones, little and big and great, gigantic ones, parcels from London, Paris, Rome, and each addressed alike to Santa. Atop them all a banner glinted, while Ignatius Hepplewhite had printed these words, Good luck and holiday mirth from all the children on the earth. With toots and hoots and honks and light-hearted, light -hearted, the buses turned and the trains departed, leaving the saints surrounded by parcels piled to the polar sky. Santa was silent for a minute. His eyes looked bright, but a tear stood in it. Then he blew his nose like a trumpet blast. God bless my soul, he said at last. By the big Borealis, by my maps and charts. I didn't know children had such kind hearts. How could a man feel gladder, prouder? He turned to his staff and his voice got louder. Gnomes, elves, every mother's son, don't stand staring, there's work to be done. Bring in the barrels, fetch in the boxes, carry in those packages, and don't break one. Where to put them? There wasn't space in parlor or study or any place. They overflowed bureau, couch, and table, filled the house, the sheds, the stable, slid from mantles, jammed the casement, bulged from attic, and burst from basement. There's nothing to do, exclaimed the elves, except to empty some workshop shelves. Off those shelves then Santa's forces whisked the painted rocking horses. When the presents wouldn't fit, down came kite and doctor's kit. Still there wasn't room for all. So away went basketball, cowboy suit, rubber boot, bicycle and talking dog, till by the time that twilight reigned, not a single toy on the shelves remained. All were sat safe sacked and packed away in the only place left the Christmas sleigh then Santa gazed from floor to rafter and gave his mightiest shout of laughter laughed loud ho ho's laughed vast ha ha's what a joke he chortled on Santa Claus you might as well phone the uh, reindeer groom to take down the harness in the big storeroom get me my gloves the robe for my lap and my coat and my warmest stocking cap there sits the sleigh with the toys inside, so what can I do tonight but ride? What about your gout? The gnomes cried out. What about your aches and the crick in your spine? Pooh, laughed Santa. My back feels fine. 
I never felt younger, never felt stronger, haven't got a symptom any longer. And before the midnight bells go chiming, I'd like to do some chimney climbing. So harness the reindeer, let them rip, it's time to begin my favorite trip. With flurry and scurry and chatter and hurry, they brought him his cap and his lap robe furry. They roused up Cupid, they robed down, rubbed down Vixen, they polished the bells on Donner and Blitzen. There were cheers from the gnomes, from the elves applause, then off through the night flew Santa Claus. And I've heard the old people often say there never was such a Christmas day, never such joy after Santa swirled from rooftop to rooftop around the world. While at the home of a sleepy boy in Texas, or was it Illinois, a special letter was left that night addressed to Ignatius Heppelwhite. It was clipped to the handle bars like a medal of the best two-wheeler a boy could pedal. Dear Sir was written in Santa's hand. Please thank the children in every land. Tell them I'll take good care, I hope, of the guppy and the puppy and the slippery soap. I like my pipes. I love my chair. I do appreciate the underwear. And I pledge this promise on my sled and pack. Year after year, I'll be coming back. Vacations, I guess, weren't meant for me. I'll never want another one. Yours, S.C. And that's one reason you may believe why children are merry on Christmas Eve. You know yourself as you hang your stocking. It doesn't matter if the winds are knocking. Though the storm falls heavy, though the great gale roars, though nobody else would budge outdoors, snug in your bed while the tempest drums, you can count your blessings on fingers and thumbs. For yearly, newly, faithfully, truly, somehow, Santa Claus always comes. <laughs>